Hello, hello. Does that work? Yes. Okay. Is this working, everyone? Can you hear me? Yes? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all so much. Is it working? I guess I can just talk loud. Can everyone hear me? Um, thank you all so very much for being here tonight. I'm actually thrilled to see the turnout of all these people who are interested in this incredibly important subject. As you know, this has um, been billed as a public conversation about the future of the Thomas Memorial Library. And by that, we truly mean a conversation. Um, not a question and answer, not us talking at you, but rather all of us talking together, you to each other, I hope. Um, the counselors are scattered in the audience, and that's on purpose, because they want to be part of the community. Uh, of course, if you have questions, um, we will try to answer them, mostly the uh, Library Foundation and Jay. Um, so uh, the format for this evening is um, a very, very brief um, presentation by Jay, our librarian, just to give a little bit of information. <laughs> And we will go right into comments, discussion, give and take, questions, whatever format people want this to be. Um, very briefly, I want to say that the council is extremely committed to hearing from as many citizens as we possibly can. This is, we're now in a period where we really want to be in listening mode. This is the first of what we hope to be several public conversations, um, formal, informal, over the course of the summer. Um, the, good folks from the library are going to be meeting with as many people as they can uh, in various formats, um, neighborhood groups, various groups in town, parent associations, CEF, CELT, virtually school board, any organization that's an organization will be inviting them in. Yeah. Could you I'm sorry. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. So I was just saying that they were going to meet with as many people as possible in informal, formal settings, groups, whatever way they can, and they would strongly encourage you to get in touch with them um, by email, by phone, invite them to a group if you have it, a book group or whatever. The more people that we can t talk with, the better. Um, so for tonight, so the, the schedule is, is, is such that through the summer we will be listening. In September, yeah. Question, is, is it being recorded? Yes. And is there a, a microphone to speak into? Yes, I apologize. It's being televised so everyone can see it. And we have a portable microphone that we will be passing around um, so that everyone can hear each other and also the viewing, viewing audience can hear you. Um, so um, to, after tonight, we, they will do informal meetings through the summer. In September, we're going to have a slightly more formal public hearing where the council's up here, maybe two if we need it. Um, and then, um, in, as you know, the referendum is um, November 6th. And as you all know, we have decided um, to put this question to a vote in November. So every citizen will be asked what your opinion is on, on the library, whether you want to go forward with it or not, a rebuild, renovation, we'll have to figure out the question, of course, but essentially you will be deciding how we move forward with the Thomas Memorial Library. So um, just briefly, some housekeeping. This handout you have on the back has some informal tours of the library with lots of dates. I would encourage you, if you would, could get to one of them, it's very, very informative to get a tour and see um, the many, many problems actually with the current building um, and, and this, I won't even go into the space issues and the mold and everything else, but there's, there's, there's many, many needs to be met and these, this is a great way to do it. So, um, without further ado, I am going to hand it over to Jay Shermer, our librarian, but I need to just quickly tell you that Jay was awarded the Outstanding Librarian of the Year last week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to keep this brief. I've got about 10 slides that I'm going to share with you. 
Uh, what I've been asked to do is give you a brief overview of the project to date, uh, and I hope that we can go through that relatively quickly. Uh, if at the end of the presentation you have any specific questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Um, but you know, if not, we'll just move right into the uh, conversation. So first and foremost, what I would say is that um, what we're dealing with here is an incomplete project. Um, there seems to be some assumptions in the community that the project is much further down the road than it is. Everything to date that has been done is conceptual and conceptual only. If the project were to move forward after a vote in November, it would move into a formal building committee, which would review things like the program and final design. So what you're seeing tonight are conceptual only. The project began in 2007 when the Comprehensive Planning Committee was asked to do a new 10-year plan for the town. And first among their priorities for municipal facilities was a study group to be uh, named to look at the library, which had not been touched for 27 years. The library is actually comprised of five separate buildings. Uh, and uh, those five buildings date from 160 years old to about 28, almost 30 years old. The study began um, when the Himmelin Wilson um, Consulting Group from uh, Wisconsin was named after an RFP search, uh, and they were asked to conduct a series of um, examinations. Uh, they did a full architectural and engineering review of the facility. They established 10 focus groups in the community to review with people uh, what their priorities were. We had a statistically valid survey done by telephone, and we had an informal internet survey of about 683 respondents for a total of over 1,000 people having some input into the project. During the study, uh, the first of the sections that was addressed was the so-called needs assessment, and over 100 deficiencies were identified in the building. Um, Hundred uh, deficiencies were identified in the building. Um, they included failures to comply with ADA regulations, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system issues, structural problems, um, load bearing capacity in many of the floors, uh, air exchange, uh, layouts, and a number of things of that sort. In 2009, the study committee after meeting approximately 13 times, uh, delivered its final report to the town council. That report studied three separate things and made three separate recommendations. First of all, they looked at simply reprogramming the existing space. And the determination was that it was too expensive a project with too little net gain. Uh, the second alternative that was offered was the uh, addition to some parts of the existing structure, so a renovation and addition basically. That was determined to be viable but not optimal. Uh, it would still leave access issues. And the final um, thing studied was the question of whether or not to replace the facility entirely. That was eventually put forward as being the optimal solution because it added little in cost to the second. In 2010, the new council that was seated in January authorized two further expenditures, one to study the capacity of the town of Cape Elizabeth for independent fundraising, and the second thing was to further design, a uh, second design phase for the project to assist in that capital campaign if it should become necessary. To that end, in 2011, the original architectural firm of Casaccio Architects engaged, uh, was engaged by the town and came up with a new study that met some uh, emergent priorities of the community, which was, excuse me, which was in essence <coughs> a attempt to retain the Pond Cove annex part of the building, which is essentially the newest part of the building, <coughs> and to design a mating um, addition to that. 
The reason for this is that it would retain more green space with a smaller footprint. <coughs> it would reduce the project cost by retaining 8,000 square feet of existing space. Uh, it would retain the town green in front of the library, uh, and it would still answer the concerns. In 2011 through 2012, the DeMont Associates of uh, Portland, Maine, uh, undertook a capacity study and determined after uh, a number of targeted interviews that it was entirely feasible that two, $2 million could be raised in the town of Cape Elizabeth to offset the town's cost. As Sarah indicated, the current state of the process is this. We are in the process of speaking with the public and engaging the public in attempting to educate them to what the issues are at the library, but also to further define with the public their priorities and needs uh, so that if the project does go forward, the building committee has something uh, more substantive to work with. Uh, in order to accomplish this, uh, there will be a series of library meetings, one every week at a different time for each of three separate months. Uh, informational meetings will be held with stakeholders, and to that end, the town uh, trustees have sent emails to most of the identified stakeholder groups in the community. Um, we are awaiting word to schedule those meetings. Finally, neighborhood teas, and we are looking to people who are willing to host those. Um, hopefully, those events would be promulgated uh, both through notification in the newspaper of when and where they were going to happen, but also through flyers being stuffed in people's either mailboxes or front doors. Uh, finally, as Sarah indicated, we're looking forward to council workshops and formal hearings in September and or October, and a referendum vote in November. I'm just gonna very quickly go through uh, the plans for you. Uh, first and foremost, you will notice the upper level as proposed. The area in purple is the retained Pond Cove Annex. Everything else is built around and behind it. Uh, the building essentially sits on the same footprint on the lot, uh, thereby retaining that front green, and you can see that in a later drawing. Uh, it's important to note that all library functions have been put on one level, so that anyone who comes into the building uh, will have everything at their fingertips without having to go up and down stairs. The lower level of the building essentially is designed as a community center or a cultural center. Um, there is storage below the original part of the building because the ceiling heights, quite, quite frankly, will be lower than optimal. Uh, in addition to that, there is space which in the current drawings is like loaded, uh, I'm sorry, labeled as historical society. It is intended that the historical society will have space within the building as they do currently, um, but we also anticipate that some of this space might be available for other um, functions, uh, perhaps uh, a studio space or something of that sort. And finally, the wing to the extreme left on the bottom of the, is the uh, mechanical and the meeting space. It's important to note that if this meeting space is, were to be built, it would be one of five spaces in the town that would have a capacity of over 150 people. It would be one of two municipal spaces that could do that. Finally, after hearing from a number of people about the type of design that they were looking for in the library, uh, we finally found um, something that resonated with most of the people who were tested. Uh, you can see that it's a variation, a modern variation on standard colonial Georgian architecture. Uh, and uh, you can see that it's intended to mask to the original structure. Finally, the landscaping on the, the uh, site has been designed to optimize the site uh, so that the public does still have green space or, or public park space in front of the building. Uh, the parking is kept masked, but is sheltered by uh, landscaping, and the building is deliberately made as open as possible to the schools behind it. And if there's any other requests for information, I'd be happy to answer those, or you can go to the library's website, and all of the building documents produced to date are available there. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. 
Okay. Uh, on the lower level. If we were moving from left to right, uh, brown area at the left, meeting rooms one, two, and conference room. Uh, meeting rooms one, two, and the conference room are actually all one room divided by um, folding doors in, in the same sense as any convention center that you may have been into. Um, the rooms on the extreme eastern or lower facade are from left to right the mechanical room, the kitchen facilities for the meeting rooms, the men's room, and the women's room. The green area in the section of the building is currently marked historical society. The yellow or mustard colored room to the right of that is the technical services workspace. And the rooms in the basement of the current Pond Cove Annex building are storage, miscellaneous, and mechanical spaces. Does that answer that question? It is about two and a half times the, the space currently available to them. Is there a, um, I have two questions. One, you mentioned that the lower, uh, wait, I might talk about the future. Salaj Kaminsky, Gladys Road. A uh, question. You, you had mentioned that the uh, height on the lower floor was um, less than optimum. Do you know what that is? Clear? Um, I don't have those numbers in front of me. It's about 14 inches below, or I should say, underneath the Pond Cove Annex, under the original part of the building, uh, in order to not get involved with the question of re-engineering the footings for the foundation. Uh, what they have done is they have put on that side of the building anything that's not publicly driven so that the foundation or the ceiling heights in the new wing are 14 inches higher than the other side. His second question is, have, has anybody broken out the square footage of the main, the entire library and the square footage of the lower level, total square footage? The total square footage of the building as a whole is just, uh, just over 22,000 square feet. Um, the Pond Cove Annex portion of the building that's being maintained is 8,000 square feet on the upper and lower levels. So I think it would be you know, a fair estimate to say you're looking at 11,000 square feet, uh, or I'm sorry, um, yeah, 11,000 square feet up and down. Thank you. Will we have ask, uh, access, and if so, how will we have ask, access to the library when it's being built? The question that was asked is, will there be access for library services while the new library is under construction? Uh, although the final uh, plan has not been worked out uh, as to how that would be accomplished, it will be accomplished. Uh, my best guess at this point is that we would move the most active parts of the collection into some sort of temporary housing, uh, whether that was within this building or another town building or within trailers has yet to be determined. Um, the rest of the collection would be moved into either storage or if we can work out agreements with our neighbors in South Portland and Scarborough, some of it would be temporarily located in those two towns. We would also seek reciprocal borrowing agreements with those two towns. Uh, so that people who are living on either of the two borders uh, would be able to have direct access to a library facility uh, that might have more substance during the building period. Jay, do you want to sit down since it's a conversation? Just to finish up the, an earlier question, uh, I'm now on the site plan, or the site plan is uh, up on the wall. The parking areas are the gray areas at the bottom of the screen. The bulk of it is about the same size as the library footprint. 
Um, there are some additional parking spaces along the access route. Uh, we had to maintain or we have maintained access to uh, the dentist and uh, uh, barber shop uh, that share the lot uh, or the corner with us. About 70 spots. When opened in its entirety, the conference room will seat about, oh, the, I'm sorry, the meeting rooms will seat about 155. The conference room is rated, I think, at 20. Um, the intention there, we describe it as a conference room, and certainly it could be used as that. It's also a computer lab, as we, as we see this coming down the road, with a, a minimum of 10, perhaps 15 computers available for ganged use. Um, so 150 people is you could have for a meeting. Unless, as I said, we're able to open it all the way into the conference room, at which point it might go as high as 170. Which still isn't very high. It's more than we can hold now. Right now our capacity is 80. I think the computer room is a very good idea. I spend half a year in Arizona, and they have all new clients. And computers are never unused. I mean, it's the Wi-Fi and the whole thing. But is this going to mean that the original building will be torn down, I hope? <laughs> um. Jay, do you want to sit down here so it's like a can? You sit down if, if I might. Okay. Um, and if I need to deal with the screen, I will. Um, we're hopeful of a number of things. First, first and foremost, we are hopeful that a private group will come forward and um, ask for permission from the council to um, assume uh, ownership of the original 1849 uh, one-room schoolhouse, which is the front of the current children's library. Um, it is the area where the juvenile picture books are currently housed, for those of you who have used the library in a while. Um, you know, I'm, I've talked to the manager, and there are no final plans at this point, but I, I'm pretty sure that the manager and the council would be in favor of trying to relocate it to some other town property if that were possible. Um, virtually everything behind the 1912 Pond Cove Annex has structural issues. And essentially everything behind the two classrooms that were added in 1912 will be bulldozed. Because architecturally, they just don't work. Uh, no, no, they, they, they do not work. Thank you. Thank you. Is this the sole design that is going to be put forth for the referendum, or will there be other options perhaps that will not carry the price tag that this one does? Yes. Um. I, want, I think we all want to stress that this is not cast in stone, this is not a final project, nor is this necessarily the design that we will be going with. Um, I think there's an impression in town that this is 80% done, and it's not, it's more like 20%, and that's part, that's a, really a large reason why we want to have these public conversations. The council needs to hear from the citizens what it is you do want. Maybe you want a much smaller technology center, maybe you want, um, I don't know what people want. That's why we're here. Um, so I think the councillors are very eager to hear what your vision is. Do you want it to be a smaller footprint and less money? Do you think it's great to have the cultural center? What do you want this new building to be? So it, it, this may be the final design, but it may not be. And that depends entirely on what we hear from you. Can I also speak to that? Yeah. Um, are you asking for my opinion? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Right now? <laughs> sure. I, I personally think that uh, the town should have a new library because I think that it has a lot of um, inadequacies. I personally do not feel as if we need more meeting spaces in town um, other than perhaps a conference room because there are many, many places through... What is? Um, there are other buildings in town that have meeting spaces and I mean, how many meetings do we really have? Um, and um, 
as far as a computer room, I do believe that that's totally essential. And um, as far as the historical society, I'm not so certain that that needs to be in the library. So I would be in favor of a smaller building, but a new one. It's been a request that if you could um, give your name uh, as you're making your, your question or statement or whatever, just so that everybody knows. We'd like to have a name. A lot of feedback going on here. It's heading in and out. There you go. Martha Agan. Um, I'm not certain that everyone understands that when the Inn by the Sea put their addition on, they put on a huge volume of conference room. They have parking, they have the conference room, it's all in place. I'm not sure that everyone understands that because they don't abut the Inn by the Sea. I live very close and have been in through the facility and they have tons of space. I'm not certain that we need the extra conference rooms that you're thinking of adding to the library. Thank you, and I'd like to see people. Um, again, Philip Kaminsky, uh, just as a little background, I do work within the design and urban planning uh, profession. One of the things that has gotten my attention is that the battery must be weak. One of, one of the things that has gotten my attention is the, uh, the process uh, by which the community has come together. Um, right now, I'm fairly uncomfortable sitting in rows looking at the back of heads. Um, the type of process that I'd, I'd like to see and that I've, I've experienced in other communities with similar issues, uh, building space and looking at urban, urban issues, town centers, is a urban design um, community charrette uh, where you start by bringing, inviting everybody in the community uh, to the school, one of the schools with tables. Uh, you invite professionals. Uh, you actually hire a, a moderator, um, Steve Holt, who people may know from South Portland, has uh, done some of these um, from Kittery all the way up uh, to Falmouth. <coughs> I don't think it's too late to bring that process together. Uh, there would be a little bit of money um, that would have to be spent for materials um, to hire the facilitator uh, and to make uh, ready the school um, for a large group of people. And, and what would happen in that process is you would get professionals, uh, landscape architects, architects, um, working with no, no pay at all. Uh, who have been doing this for many years, um, working with the community on teams of six to eight to come up with ideas, uh, ideas for the town center, ideas for reusing the facilities that we have in the town center, ideas for, we've already done programming for the library to look at what we have now and see how we might be able to make it better or avoid any disaster. And um, I think it's really important uh, that the process be looked at and, and we look at the concept of a community shred at this point in time before we go much further so that everybody gets a chance to put down ideas, to talk across a table, uh, to present their ideas to the entire community, and we get to know each other. It's, um, it's very difficult in, in, a, in a session like this or a presentation like this to really get to know your, your neighbors that don't live in, this, in the same area of Cape and understand their ideas. Um, but there would be people there that can draw your ideas if you don't want to draw. If you do want to draw, you can draw also. Um, some of you may have been, been participants in this type of process. A, a charrette is basically a, a session where you, you come with ideas um, as teams. You draw ideas, you have maps, you have aerial photos, you have plans, you have plans of the library, plans of, of space within the town that might be available. And it's literally an open process. What can you do? Where should it go? 
Are there any better places? Is there space that could be better utilized? Um, is there underutilized space that we're paying for that might absorb some of the program within this? As part of that process, um, there, there are really four things that we're faced with to, to get um, the library in place. One, the open process, inviting the community. Two, stewardship, uh, which is the best use of the town's resources. I don't know that that's happening with, with this particular um, design or, or process. Uh, responsibility, which is budget and cost. What can people afford? Um, what should it cost? And then something, ha putting out something that's approvable. Yes? Did you find, you've been to one of those, have you? Yes. 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 You find them exciting? Yes. Yes, okay. Bad coffee, but exciting times. If I, if I um, can, so. Can I interject? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, it's true, we're not doing that. We don't have the paper and the crayons, which actually is probably a good idea. But I, maybe we can be one step short of that and continue to have a brainstorming session where people could say, oh, this is what I'd love. I mean, I would love to hear from your children what they would like the children's. So I, that was our hope, that it would be a bit more of a brainstorming or a wish list. What do I want or what do I don't want? I mean. I think we have a break in this format. We have circles and tables. Yeah, it, you really, it, it takes. to know what the other people, I mean, I, it's, I think it's really helpful for everyone to hear what everyone else is saying and what the ideas are. So yeah, as an initial. Right, right, right. But as an initial, for tonight, as a, we're not doing that tonight. And I appreciate the idea, and I think it's a great idea. But it, for the sake of. Could we, of, could we of, get a, I, un, I understand that. Right. I want to keep. My, my uh, fellow neighbor understands it. But one. But let me try to handle it. Is that something that we I can mean, do? I mean, in other words, to do? I, I understand what you're saying. It's a great idea. But it's not what we're doing tonight. So I want to do what we're doing tonight, which is to hear from as many folks as we can. I want to explain, Mr. Pence. I think as Jay said on the, the program, you know, that he briefly put on, we've had over 600 people involved in the process through, some, through activities like Tourette's over the last five years. Uh, this is just one evening, as Jay explained, and a whole series of opportunities for public engagement. Uh, you know, occasionally, people like to hear from each other in large groups and not just in small groups. The, the intent was, for people to hear ideas in a larger group this evening, there'll be many, many opportunities for people to contribute in smaller groups. I, I understand that fully, but what I'm lobbying for, and maybe I'm not <laughs> is that I would like a commitment from the town manager and the town council to fund a charrette like this, publicize it with the community, provide the space and the materials, and give us the confidence that everybody here and hundreds more can come together and really work on ideas. And we'll start with what we have as a base, but move from that. So I'm looking for a commitment from the town to put it on their agenda and come back to the town's people um, saying that they would like to move in that direction. And if there are any other people that would like to do that, Please stand up and You know and what, give if I may, support. I can't give a commitment because I don't have access to the rest of the counselors in a conversation, but we do have a workshop, uh, I think it's next week, at the very beginning of June, and I will discuss it with the other counselors and see what they think of it. You know, but giving a commitment tonight would be inappropriate. I, I could have, if I might add to that, Sarah, I think it's important that we have many different forums of many different varieties, including charrettes. Uh, you know, the needs to, everyone feels comfortable in different environments, and as a community, we need to have environments where everyone feels comfortable. Whether it's a tea in someone's house, whether it's a charrette, 
or whether it's something where you get to hear 60 or 70 other people. So, you know, while the council may not be fully yet willing to make that commitment, it's, it's, you know, it's clear that we, we need to continue to evolve this process by getting as many ideas and suggestions as possible. Thank you. Talk loud. <laughs> Hello, Ann Swift Kayata, 14 Stonebridge Road. Um, I just uh, wanted to respond to Mr. Kaminsky in, uh, in that I think it's an interesting idea to have charrettes, and I found them very useful. We held two charrettes two years ago. I was on a library committee uh, several years ago, and we held two community charrettes over at the uh, library building in the basement. It was useful. We did have diagrams and people could draw on them and Maureen O'Meara, the town planner, was there so she could advise us, all, um, all the citizens who came on what the town zoning was and what the restrictions of the law uh, were. And while I'm up here, I might as well just say my piece on my, my other stuff. Um, I just want to state my uh, strong support for this, what I think is very important project for the community. I think it's going to meet our community's needs for 30 years to come. I understand this may not be exactly what ensues out of this if the citizens approve it in the fall, but I do think there's a strong need for it. The current Thomas Memorial Library building is severely deficient in my opinion. I go up there regularly. Um, the children's room is just a mess. The basement room where they do the programs is a mess. I think it's an appalling condition. It's damp, it's dark, it's unwelcoming, and um, the building isn't ADA compliant. I was on crutches a few years ago, and I found it really hard to go up and down the steps. The lifts, I, I don't want to run down my own community's library, but it's, it's a mess. It's, uh, it just doesn't work right. The lifts are an embarrassment. The bathrooms are hard to access. The floors can't bear the, uh, the load of the books that they should. The air conditioning and the heating systems don't work right because it's not, the library is on five levels. It's not efficient to run, um, so it's not cost effective. I you know, have been uh, accused of being a fiscal conservative, and I am, so it takes a lot for me to think it's a good time to spend a bunch of money on something, but it's so inefficient to run things despite the noble efforts of the staff over there um, and, and our buildings folks. It's just not efficient. I have been to a number of libraries in Falmouth, in Freeport, in other suburban communities, and they are wonderful. They're beautiful places to meet, to educate kids, to study, to do research. They're great, and I think ours, in comparison to theirs, our library building, in comparison to theirs, is an embarrassment. Um, the library is used by all sorts of people. I think it's an extension an important part of our education system in town, and I think education is really important to this community. Um, the preschool programs are very popular um, for good reason. They're excellent, um, but uh, the physical facilities are miserable. Um, school children, especially kids after school, use that building heavily. Young adults use that building. Senior citizens use that building a lot. When I go in during the day, I mean, I'm like the youngest person there, and that's saying a lot. So, I mean, it's, it's uh, very popular. Also, people who don't have their own computers go there because they can have free access to computers. So, in short, I think what we see is that the library usage is up for a good reason. The economy has been a real problem for many people in our community and elsewhere, and the free books, the free programs, the free CDs, the free DVDs, the free children's programs are all very important. Not everybody can afford the new technology of a Nook or a Kindle. Um, and even if they could afford it, maybe that's not how they want to spend their money. So I, I think public libraries are key to an educated and free citizenry. I know that sounds really lofty and maybe sort of corny, but I think it's really important. One of the first things our country did when we got going was to start to set up free public libraries for people. And I think even though the, the country has changed and people um, have different needs now, I think there will always be libraries. So 
in short, I think they're a critical resource, and I really urge the Council and the citizens of, the Cape, of Cape Elizabeth to think about their needs and, more importantly, the needs of their children for the future. And I strongly support this. I hope people vote for, I don't know how, the word, how it's going to be worded in the fall, but I hope people support the project, and I hope the Council supports the project. So thank you. Hi, I'm Naomi Quank. I have only lived in Cape Elizabeth for about a year and a half now, but I have been following, uh, visiting Cape Elizabeth for quite a while, and it seems to me that the library project has been discussed for many years, that a tremendous amount of information has been collected, and yet some of the comments that were made earlier it sounds like we're starting from scratch here and there's nothing in existence. I am assuming, and Jay, you can correct me, that some of these questions about is there other space that could be used, can we do this or can do that, have already been explored. Is that not the case? Um, they have been explored in the past and continue to be in the present. We're always studying options for optimizing space use. Yeah. And just one other comment with regard to having meeting spaces and having a community room where large programs can be held. I do use the services of the library. That's what a library is for. It's for disseminating information and allowing people to come together and be, be able to discuss interesting educational things with each other. And I, I do not think, I've never gone to a program somewhere else that was a library program. I don't believe that uh, programs that are given at the library for all of us would be supported in other, in other um, physical spaces. Lastly, as to the historical society, I think that historically it has always been in the library. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, for, most no. of its for most of its history. And I have seen the space it's in, and it's pretty appalling. It's like a closet. Um, but I believe that it's an a library is an appropriate place for a historical society, because what are books but the history of our civilization? And the historical society, though it may be Cape Elizabeth history, is certainly a long history. So that's all I have to say. Uh, Louise Sullivan, again. <laughs> um, I also support a new library. I think we need a new library. Um, I think it's an opportunity, though, and you've probably already done this, but it would be great if we knew about it. It's also an opportunity to look at how our town is designed, our town center. And um, so perhaps and probably you have already looked at reorienting the library or hooking up with something else or you know so that we could have a more open town center and not just a straight road by a strip mall um, so I if if that hasn't happened I hope we do do it I think I'm going to ask the manager to address that question <laughs> Yeah, uh, Mrs. Sullivan, Louise, we, we have looked at some of those things over the years. To be honest, we haven't looked at it as much in the last five years of making some of those changes in the town center, in part because of the economy and the, the timing would not have, you know, it would not, I don't think it would have been welcomed by most citizens if we talked about looking at the, the old town center vision of having sidewalks on both sides of the street. And, you know, the, some of the fiscal realities have stopped some of that. The library itself, we, we looked at 
different locations for it. There was a strong consensus from all the citizens that came forward that they wanted it to remain in the town center. Uh, you know, there is that current location. A few other locations were looked at. Nothing really came of them. But uh, it, it, the project really has been driven by a lot of community input that they felt the library belonged in the town center. Yeah, we, we, we did look at changing that town center <laughs> intersection. <and laughs> <laughs> not, not with this in mind, and maybe if they raise gas prices a little, uh, <laughs> traffic would be down, but anyway. No, it's, it, we, you know, that was, that got up over a million dollars to do that intersection, and we, we, you know, there were folks that wanted a roundabout that was going to involve the taking of properties, and that sort of just ran out of steam due to uh, community opposition, so. Uh, if I can speak to that point just briefly, um, a couple of things that were specifically looked at. Um, the rest of the school campus, the 100 acres of the school campus was looked at just on the off chance that there was some other location where a, an adequate piece of land could be found um, with a lot of input from uh, the planner. And in point of fact, if you were actually to look at the usage of the school campus, you would find that the land that can be used is being used. Um, there is no two and a half acre parcel of land anywhere on that campus that could be freed uh, in any easy way. Uh, secondly, the question of whether or not the library could have direct frontage on Ocean House Road was studied. Um, there are some major issues with um, intersections uh, and clearances through the state, uh, according to the planner. So that was abandoned. Uh, the question of whether or not property could be, I don't want to use the term taken, but purchased uh, in the town center was also looked at briefly. It would add significantly to the cost of the project, and the cost could not be recovered simply by resale of the existing property. So that was abandoned. The police station is 8,000 square foot, wouldn't even begin to meet the need. But you could add that? No, the land is simply not no. there. The, the, police, the police station. Well, no, no. no, let me answer your question, Mr. Well, Kaminsky. No, no, no. I'm answering. You just said it's simply not there. If we have a charrette, a real charrette with a facilitator and not a political charrette, these things can happen. You can open up the minds and see what can be done. Louise mentioned an issue that it's, this may be the last chance that this town has for a major project to look at town center and how we live in our town center. I believe we need a library. I believe that library needs to be either renovated or replaced. But I, I'm not so sure that it should be all that's on that plan, that maybe some of it needs to go away. And I'm not sure that it should not be more than one building. Uh, maybe a renovation of Pine Cove, a taking of the police center for library uses, since it's not used anyway, but for two offices, uh, maybe some lockers and showers and parking, and an addition that could be an entrance looking back at a new town center plan where people can move from the schools to the community center, past fire and police, all the way out to the historic Pine, Pine Cove building. There are a lot of ideas out there that ought to be generated, look at now. If you miss the opportunity now, it's just never going to happen because you're not going to see a project this large. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Kaminsky. As, you know, as was mentioned, we had a couple of charrettes earlier, and we did look at many of those ideas. We looked at, uh, there were a number of different people. Uh, Himmel and Wilson were involved in it. But they're, they're invested in it. They're not a dis, in, a, a dis um, um, interested party that's just looking to get all the community ideas together. Somebody like a Stephen Hall, I don't work with him, I don't get any benefit from him, but he is one firm that does that type of thing and does it very well, and the community seems to respond to it. I really would encourage us to open this process, really open this process. I don't know if you I think that you would have applied to restate it, whatever you're thinking about, several times you've heard of that. 
Excuse me. So, fine. I, I, I hear what case, you're saying. Good. But if, in fact, you run through with an 8 to $12 million real cost on an issue, it's not going to make it through the town. Thank you. I, I kind of agree with this gentleman that you've had more than your share of airtime. So I really, really want to hear from more and different voices, if we could. So I appreciate what you're saying. I hear it. I hear you want a charrette, and you want to open the thing open, and you want to be creative, and you want to look at the whole town center. I've heard you. Okay? So let's hear from more people on all different other topics. Yeah, let's start with you. Maybe we should have goat so people can hang on goats and backpacks and inspiring places to meet and get to know if you think you could speak, but if you... Uh, my name is Ashley Collins, and I, I have yet to hear someone say thank you for hosting this and for um, offering us the opportunity to speak and see the space and um, take part in future workshops. Uh, I've used the library since I arrived about 15 years ago, and I've used it from day one coming forward. I've brought my kids here as taught to the library as toddlers. I still bring them as middle school age children, and I um, have taken part in some of the programming that's been at the library, and I've thoroughly enjoyed the help of the staff throughout the years. Um, if I was to speak as a community member, uh, I would like to, to continue to use the library and have it be a solid uh, community entity. It's really the one place that all ages come together um, to be together as a group and explore different interests, use, sh use and share knowledge together, um, and I'd like to see that continue. I've thoroughly enjoyed the um, the uh, opportunities you've had to bring different artists to the community because I feel that is one um, area that as a town it's it's difficult to meet that need but the library is one um, the workshops that you've hosted um, by staff members that have led um, led the workshops are very valuable and the outdoor concerts you hold and um, I'd like to see more real community usage of the library. And so if we can do that with continued programming, um, and even my husband had suggested some outdoor meeting spaces even, or even some social spaces within the library that would be, you know, it wouldn't disturb the library's activities, but be a place where, like the poetry reading could come and be accessible. and. Um, those are the things I guess I'd, I'd like to see. So thank you. Thank you. Hello, Doug Dransfield, uh, Richmond Terrace. Um, 
I'm curious uh, what other towns have done and what has been explored about combining library usage in the different libraries in the town. Um, the, we have um, school populations that are served by school libraries, and then we have the town library. And I'm wondering whether we could, in some way, make the best of all of those in a combined way. Is there any information about that, or has that been talked about? Um, well, um, there are multiple ways to answer that question. Um, and I guess the, the first way that I would address the question is to simply talk about what cooperative agreements are out there at present and uh, what is currently being done to optimize or maximize um, um, delivery of library services through economies of scale. And I guess the first thing that I, I would mention is um, the Minerva network, um, which we have been a part of since its inception. Uh, Minerva is a resource sharing uh, cooperative of about 60 member libraries. It has a little bit of flux in that. Um, it's about a quarter of a million patrons are served directly through Minerva. Uh, we share an integrated library system uh, which is um, remarkable in its um, ability to provide direct access and uh, current shelf status on over uh, a million separate individual titles across the network and I think about 12, 1.2 million um, to 1.3 million individual items. Uh, the library, Thomas Memorial Library, I'm proud to say, is one of the net lenders in the consortium. We do about 30,000 interlibrary loans a year, uh, which represents- You're talking about the school, trying to consolidate yeah, I, 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 the that, three. Um, Anyway, so resource sharing and, and what that manages to do for us, it, it probably saves us somewhere in the neighborhood of $130,000 in materials acquisitions. Um, libraries in, for instance, the middle American states, um, the so-called Great Plains states, are often served by what are county library systems. It's a very effective way of delivering library services, but I would have to point out to you that in Maine, our county system is um, not functioning at peak capacity. And um, to, to reintegrate um, those systems would mean undoing a 250 year history of autonomy by the individual townships and would mean the construction of new facilities that could actually share um, space in Geographically Can continue. I just specifically ask about schools and the integration? Can I interrupt you for one second? Yeah. Nancy, do you want to address this? Because Nancy was here from the very beginning. And I think you all sorry, Jay, but I think you had a, lots of discussion. I think the question was, has has the the fact that we essentially have four libraries in town, correct? We have a Pond Cove Library, a middle school library, a high school library, and a Thomas More library, all staffed, all with space, all with books. And at first blush, that seems crazy. And so has there been a conversation about bringing them all together or trying to consolidate in some way? And I know that there was extensive conversations about this, so I will hand it over to you. Thank you. I'm Nancy Marshall. Um, I chaired the Library Study Committee, uh, which recommended in 2009 that we build a new library. Um, so sitting here listening to these questions is so deja vu for me because <laughs> We went through a lot of these, but let me specifically uh, respond to this current question. Um, I often think that saying you have school libraries and why don't they consolidate with the public library becoming one is kind of like in your kitchen you have a refrigerator and you have a dishwasher. You don't put your food in the dishwasher to keep it cold and you don't put your dirty dishes in the refrigerator to be washed. Um, school libraries, even at the three levels they're here, elementary, middle school, and high school, serve different populations. And they are specifically geared to those elementary, middle school, and, and high school. Public libraries do not collect the same kind of materials that the school libraries do, because we, 
public libraries have a different mission. And that mission goes, as we say, from cradle to grave. And like Anne, I recently um, hurt my leg and I have a brace on it. And I had real trouble getting up the stairs in Thomas Memorial Library. It was almost like me saying to one of the staff, could you please go get me a book? Um, so to answer your question, yes, we studied that issue. We looked at that. We've heard that question over again. I'm not saying we shouldn't hear it, but that is the answer. Each library serves its own population best. Meredith? Thank you. Um, can you hear me? My, I'm, my name is Jessica Sullivan. I'm a town councilor, and I'm the liaison for the library. The other point I'd like to make in answer to Mr. Dransfield's question, which, by the way, we hear frequently, is a, an issue of security. The schools limit access to the public very, very carefully as to who can come and go in a school building for, for reasons of security for the children. They sign in. They sign out, they are there for a very limited time, they're monitored and then they leave. You, you wouldn't have that in a public library. The public needs to be able to come and go. And so to me, that's probably the most glaring issue as to why you would not combine public and school libraries. And anyway, so I wanted to bring that point up. Thank you. I just, excuse go me. Ahead. Just, I'm afraid I've been misunderstood. I wasn't saying that I was thinking that we should take all four libraries and put them in one place. I'm saying instead, aren't there ways that managerially one can coordinate and have a library function for the town that meets all these different needs and somehow takes in the idea of having library functions in the schools, in a public building uh, that is more integrated and therefore maybe more cost effective. That's what I was trying to get at. I wasn't trying to say, let's not build a library. I wasn't saying, you know, we all should go down to the high school and use that one. That's not my point. And I'm sorry I didn't phrase my question very well. So could somebody address that? So are you saying that the programming, not the, not the physical space, but the programming should be more collaborative and integrated among the four? Yeah, I'm saying that, it, that if you had one person in charge of libraries for the town or one council in charge of libraries for the town, they might have a better understanding of how to use resources and how to allocate things among the different locations so that there was economy of scale. It's a good idea. Yeah. <clears throat> My name is Bob Tripler. I live in Shore Acres. <clears throat> I love the library. Spend a lot of time there, find their personnel are fantastic. Uh, but I'll tell you, we would have liked to have a 10-room house with four bathrooms on the shore, but we can't afford it. And I'm just wondering how 
this wonderful place, which I think would be great, how on earth we're going to pay for that? I go back to the gentleman who was talking so much before. He mentioned the problem with the finances, and this is something I think concerns a lot of the citizens. No. I mean, you can answer if you want. It's, it's just, a, I mean, I, I agree with him that a lot of people are asking that question. Yeah. I'm not sure there is an answer yet. Yeah, uh, Mr. Tripler, it, it's, a, it's a very good point. Anything that we do costs money. The library will cost money to build. It will bear interest cost. It will build, it will bear operational cost. Uh, you know, one of the reasons, you know, the library's been talked about, as I mentioned, since 20, 2007 or earlier. One of the reasons uh, it's on the forefront now is that we're retiring a lot of debt in the next few years, and our overall debt limit, uh, if this project was done at essentially uh, the value that this shows, uh, the debt service would, will still be relatively even if there was simply a substitution of expiring debt service for this. That ignores the fact, though, that that there may be some other needs in the community, schools and town, that also need to be looked at. And it also, you know, I think the point goes without saying, if you, if you, you know, the, the over $600,000 debt payment we have that's no longer have to be made in 2015, 16, if that wasn't used for the library, that would, that would be gone and would then be some tax relief. I'm Chris McCarthy, and I've lived here a little less than a year. That was my daughter, Madison. Uh, I don't look it, but I, I'm actually kind of old school. I think my, my kids would attest to that. And somebody had brought up about, you know, technology in the library and how um, people use these electronic devices to read books these days. And I'm pretty old school. I like to have a physical book in my hand, and I always will, and I hope that whatever your future plans continues to have as much of that as possible, for, because for me, it's no different than listening to a vinyl album versus uh, electronic music, you know? <laughs> There's something about having that novel in your hand, and so I hope that's not lost. But that being said, I also recognize that as a community, we have to serve everybody's needs, so I think it's really important to have as much um, access to new technology as possible. So I think in whatever your final plan is, really as much of the modern technology as you can have in there and, and design it for the fact that whatever you put in is going to be outdated by the time it's built and you want to make sure that you have capacity for future endeavors, whether it's computer servers or whatever. That, that, you know, the size of that stuff goes up and down, you know. Cell phones were this big when they came out, and now they're down like this, and now they're getting big again because you have to have a mobile, and the same thing's going to happen. So just make sure that, that you're prepared for that. But uh, another gentleman brought up this idea about combined library services, and I, I totally second that. I think that that would be a really good thing to have because if you think about all of us adults who are no longer in school, we would love to have access to all of those things you described about these, these um, other technologies and multimedia that we would also have access to. And if we're paying for it anyway, why not set it up where we can all use it? Because we can't go into the school and use it. We know that. So, uh, and also, uh, you already have meeting spaces in there. And I just, my, if I have a vote, I would say absolutely, you know, the more meeting spaces you have for whether it's book clubs or discussion groups or anything like that. I, it, you know, rather than me having to go in town to Portland to sign up for, uh, to use one of the, the little small conference rooms at the, at the college library, I'd love to be able to do that here too. And so I hope that's part of it. Thanks. I just wanted to add to things that have been said about the cooperative efforts between the schools and, and the public libraries. Uh, I, should, I should also note that um, 
part of the one town concept here in Cape is that we have a shared technology department. And in what that helps us to do uh, is it helps us to make sure the technology is transferring between the public schools and the public library um, so that the tech coordinators um, are keeping all the department heads involved and making sure that the, the, the most current applicable technologies are located in the individual facilities. Um, right now we're, we're losing um, a wonderful um, supervisor, Gary Lenoy is retiring, he's been just wonderful to work with. Um, but part of what Gary has done is that he's not only managed the inventory of equipment at the library and town hall and the police station and fire and all the municipal facilities, but he's also been responsible for um, taking care of all the paperwork for the federal E-rate monies, um, which is a benefit to all of the libraries and, in fact, all of the educational efforts here in the, in the town. So that's one of the things that's happening. Um, I would also go back and stress, um, speaking to, to your point, sir, that um, one of the things that we have been very mindful of in designing this building is the notion of flexibility. Um, we very much are aware of the fact that everything is in flux. And nothing, you know, we've made a maximum effort, I think, to date, in concept only, um, that the building should be as flexible as possible and that, you know, it's going to be plug and play. Areas that are currently being set aside for stacking, we're all too aware of the fact that although the codex is not going away, we certainly don't believe that's ever going to happen, but we do recognize the ascendancy of digital information. And we do recognize the fact that over time the collection may shrink. The important thing is that the building gives us the flexibility to reutilize that space for a new and emergent uh, technology or process. So that's one of the things that I know Sarah is certainly a, a great um, advocate for. And I'm sure that if this project goes forward, she's going to make sure that it doesn't <laughs> go away. Uh, good evening. My name is Scott Collins. And my question is related to uh, budget, and uh, uh, both for the project, the capital budget, and also operating. And maybe this information is been provided to the residents of the town through the courier or some other means, but I haven't seen it. So my first question is, uh, what is the budget for this project? As currently envisioned, the project budget is somewhere in the neighborhood of about $8.5 million with some unde um, undetermined cost for issues like temporary housing or whatever. Um, the building itself, the projected actual construction cost is, I believe, 6.1 million. Uh, in terms of operating costs, the facilities manager is currently studying that issue with the architects, looking at the systems that they thought would probably go into place. Is it anticipated that the operating costs are going to be higher than the current operating costs, um, given it's going to be a bigger Building. It seems reasonable, given the facility's uh, gross um, square footage, um, that the cost would rise somewhat, although we're very aware of the fact that the current systems are so uh, outdated and inadequate and inefficient that it may not be as much as people fear. That's our hope, anyway. And, and the $8.5 million, was that a, a voted on by the town council, or how, how did that number get around? Arrived. Those are numbers that have been projected by the uh, consulting teams. So why not a budget of, say, $6 million? It's hoped that the town's uh, burden would be about $6 million, and about $2 million could be raised through private uh, fundraising efforts, uh, co uh, a combination of grants and individual gifts. OK, then why not $4 million? Okay, Can I answer that? Yeah. It, it may be. We don't, as I said in the beginning, the current plan and idea and work that's been done, extensive work, arrived at about $8.5 million to do everything that they had heard so far that people wanted to do, which we've talked about tonight, the, meet, oh. the cultural center, the meeting room, the technology, and so forth. But again, it's six months before we put the language out there on what we're going to vote on, and we don't know. I mean, wandering around town, I hear all kinds of numbers. So. So it's the I don't want to, uh, people to walk out of the room and say, yeah. we're voting on an $8.5 million project. We don't know that yet. It's so the, it's the wish list that has generated the budget. It, Correct. Okay. Well, 
I, no. I don't know that I would <laughs> term it a wish list. It's the, the, the way the library building program was arrived at um, was to look at standard library services across the United States, things that are programmatic in general terms, and to look at assigned square footages by standard for those services. So for instance, you, you know that if you're going to house a collection of 50,000 items, which is the standard number for a community of 10,000 people, Shelving capacity would have, say, 2,000 items in any given two-phase stack. And that two-phase stack requires X number of square feet of, of floor space to sit. So you take the numbers of, of uh, square feet that are required for stacking. You take the number of square feet that are required for the standard number of seats per capita. You take the standard number of um, you know, square footage for bathrooms to serve in a given capacity, a meeting space for a given number of people in auditorium seating. All of those numbers come together in what's about a 250-page spreadsheet. The other thing I'd like to add, Scott, is at one point, if you added all the numbers together, it would have been about an $11 million project. So there's already been some changes made to get it down to 11 and a half. And then you, you get into the issue of how much do you race to the bottom. Uh, you know, I, I look at these conference tables. You know, do, do we want a library that has a conference room with a couple of tables like this, or do we hope that maybe someone donates money that's part of that cost that has a much nicer, you know, cherry conference table or whatever? And you know, and, and the hope is that some of those nicer amenities would be things that people would would uh, would donate and you know want to do in memory of someone or uh, is, is part of their legacy uh, for the library. Um, I'd like to also add a couple points. If the town uh, votes the project forward, which I, I hope it will, depending on how you know the referendum is worded, we don't know that yet. Um, if it's voted forward, I one of the first um, I think functions that would uh, occur would be the development <coughs> of a building committee, and I think. Once there is a solid building committee that would be tasked, and, and perhaps Mike McGovern can speak to this as well, they would then, as I understand it, be looking at very hard figures. And again, these designs that you see are fluid. None of this is set in stone. And so, as I understand it, as when a building committee gets down to the nitty gritty, things can change. Um, and then we would have much harder figures, which we do not have yet. Um, and again, there is every hope that, well, that there will be a very concerted effort to raise private money. I, I think um, one thing I've learned tonight, and I think that the, you folks need to do is, because there's only a few people here, obviously, from the town, you need to let the town people know that this is, you're only at the 20% mark. And these drawings that people have seen are not, it's not the plans for the library. Because when I walked in here tonight, that's what I thought. And I, probably a lot of other people are thinking the same thing. Thank you for your time. Scott, was the point of the discussion to understand if the referendum was to actually set a budget? No.
the, the 8.5 million includes a square footage cost for renovation of the current adult section of the library. It includes a square foot cost for new construction cost of the new space. It includes an allowance for all of the site work. It includes uh, all of the engineering services for the library. It includes all of the technology for the library. It includes all of the furnishings for the library. And within the area of what it includes for energy systems or whatever, there's an overall allowance on a per square foot basis for the mechanical pieces of the library. But the, the exact mechanical systems haven't been determined. And you wouldn't do that until you actually get into the, the design phase of the library. And, you know, and this is... Uh, not the final, this is not the final design phase. You have to spend a lot of money for architects uh, and engineers to do that. And the council, quite frankly, has gone back and forth in a couple of years, is do you have the citizens vote on it first or do you lay out all this money first? It's been a chicken and egg thing. And a, as of now, the, the, the decision has been going in the direction of let's try to get the overall concept, see approximately what it would cost, and then get a building committee to really begin to look at some of these details. There's no one right answer either way. And, you know, I, I, we could all d debate and discuss that. And uh, I don't know what the answer is, but it depends on how much money you want to spend uh, before you know whether or not you're going to have a project. So, uh, I wanted to know what percentage of the total cost of Yeah. So what percentage more, I just I know you can't give the exact figures, but... Janet, we can't, but it's, you know, unfortunately we're going to be in a situation that, you know, there'll be a set budget and there's going to have to be priorities, there would have to be priorities made as to, you know, what, what direction you go in. It would, the attempt is going to do it as green as possible, but, you know, some green technologies you know, everything that we do with our Alternative Energy Committee, we look at paybacks, we look at long-term cost, and, you know, those things will be looked at. But, you know, I, I don't think we're, we're in a position to say a project's going to be X million and then to come back a year and a half and say it's, it's X plus Y. Uh, that wouldn't be uh, too welcome. So, so, we, so we're going to have... No, no. That's included in the per square foot new construction cost as part of an allowance for the mechanical systems of the building. It, it's figured into the per square, foot, per square foot estimated cost based on what other buildings have cost. I th yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say that one of the considerations that we're weighing is what our other capital needs are going to be, and that's an ongoing, Frank can talk much more length about that, but basically, obviously that's a huge consideration in how much money do we have to spend, right? As a family, you have to figure that out. We don't have all the information yet. The school is doing uh, an audit of all their buildings and, and to get some idea of what their needs are going to be going forward, their capital needs, ditto with the other municipal buildings. It's a huge gestalt um, need for information before we can say we actually have X amount of money. So it's a bit of a moving target still, but we understand that that's part of our responsibility, that this is not being decided in a vacuum. Isn't the idea of a referendum that that's what sets the budget and what that determines what people are willing to pay? I mean, the town council or the, or the town manager doesn't decide how much 10,000 taxpayers or 9,000 taxpayers are going to pay. The taxpayers have to decide what they can afford and what they're willing to pay. Is that not that's the concept what, of a budget? 
That's why it's going to a vote. Okay. So it's not based on money that is not going to have to be paid because you're retired debt service. It's based on what people are willing to pay for the right library in this time to service for the next 30 years. Correct. Yeah, and, and, and up to now, it's based on, as Nancy Marshall and others worked on, it's, it's an analysis of the library needs. It's analysis of all the different activities within the library, the program, and what, and as Jay said, what, what those derive in terms of square foot. You, 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 you give a per square cost to all those things. You add in all of what you refer to as the soft costs, the things that aren't direct construction, and all of that adds up to 8.5 million. Plus, there's a little bit, as Jay mentioned, that we really haven't calculated is what temporary, you know, what would be a temporary cost as a result of relocation during the construction period. Yeah. As projected, yes. Because okay. my own feeling is, having gone through building projects for a law school where we um, renovated and did new construction, my feeling is you can go in with construction and have all new systems of HVAC and that kind of thing that is preferable than trying to patch things together. So I just didn't know how much differential there might be in what those costs are. She wants to know what's been spent to date to get to where we are right now. You know, I don't know the exact expense, but you know, we can get that information to you. Uh, most of the early money was all spent with donated funds, uh, primarily from one family. Uh, you know, of late, there's been, you know, we've probably spent around 50000 uh, but but I can get that number exactly. The DeMont study cost money, the... the uh, the uh, Thomas More Library Charitable Foundation. Do you know how much you've spent, Bob, on the planning and the, the other projects? Probably 50 to 60,000. Yeah, 50 or $60,000 has been spent by the private donated funds from the Thomas More Library Foundation. Bob Steer is the chair of their board. Thank you. Um, my name is Nancy Woolworth, and I live on Ocean Hospital. I've lived every single day of my life. Um, 
Um, I think we've got to think about the bottom line because we do that at all our homes and our taxes come out of what we can do at home. Um, I think you have to consider the bottom line and wants and needs. And it's not going to be easy, obviously, but um, I think it can be done. And uh, we, we, we've been around a long time. In fact, um, I had my music class right here. And the reason I didn't walk to the microphone is Miss Monroe said, speak up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That is a great question. Does anyone have an answer? <laughs> Good. Yeah, they, I agree with Sarah. Good question. There, there really is no plan B. That you know, there are deficiencies to the building that are going to need to be addressed. But anyone who's ever looked at local referenda have said you'd never go back a year later. Uh, you, you, need, you need a, a year to let things percolate, to figure things out, to study, to you know, let things happen, and you know, you, you begin to look at issues and other directions and possibilities, but it, it usually takes a few years before you get the courage to go out there again and uh, test the waters. I suppose that one of the things that we probably ought to be thinking about at this point is exit polling, um, so that if it does fail, we have a better sense of why it failed. And, and how to address that question in an, you know, an, an ensuing year. Um, but it, it's a very real question, and I know it's a question that many of us have, have considered. Um, I, I would also say, and, and I know that this can sound like an empty promise, but I sincerely, be, I sincerely believe this from my 16 years working in this community. Um, I think you can have every faith that your town council and your manager are going to do everything in their power to hold down the cost on this project. Um, no, we, we are thinking about exigencies. We are thinking about the fact, you know, if we have to start trimming, where do we start trimming? Uh, we are thinking about the fact that, you know, pushy comes to chubby. Um, you reutilize the stacks. You send them out to be sandblasted and repainted. Uh, you know, it may be a small savings, but it's a savings. Uh, you, you start looking and, and saying to yourself, how much storage room can I trim out of this facility? Um, so, you know, whatever you entrust to us, we will be the best possible stewards that we know how to be with it. Well, one of the things, I, I was on the tail end of the study committee, and this was discussed um, at length then, and again, I would encourage everyone to uh, go onto the library website and look at all those documents, because they're there. Um, there. That was a matter of a lot of discussion. That My recollection is that we determined, with the help of the architects and the engineers, that to take care of the initial hugely glaring needs, such as um, the uh, accessibility, which is, which is a, a very big one, um, and some of the, the uh, heating and plumbing issues and electrical, well, some of the electrical issues got dealt with immediately when they were Safety. discovered. But we're, we're talking about $2 million, is what I recall, and, and that would be needed fairly quickly to deal with some of these things. Um, and we looked at that in the study committee as an option. That was one of the options, of, is, which is basically band-aids. And the study committee rejected that option ultimately and did not um, recommend that to the town council because uh, the feeling was 
you're throwing good money after bad. You still have five levels. You still have very old buildings that are crumbling. And you have other problems that have not gone away. And you've just spent $2 million of your taxpayer money. So the study committee felt that the best stewardship of taxpayer dollars was to go forward with a recommendation of a new facility. Hi, everyone. Um, Kim Monahan, Derek, your state representative for most of Cape Elizabeth. Um, I'll be very brief. I just wanted to get up to um, support my um, strong support for development of a new library. I've um, taken tours, seen firsthand um, the um, unfortunate deterioration of a lot of the buildings. Um, and um, I'm, I'm actually spent a lot of time in the library, too. I'm a recent graduate student. I spent 50% of my time at the Glickman, Glickman Library at the University of Maine, and another 50% of my time at the Thomas Memorial Library. And I'm sure that Jay and his library staff can attend to it. There she goes. She's going into that room right in front of the uh, Gabe Zimprich uh, reading room. She's throwing all her books down, and she's going to sit there for another three hours. And coincidentally, I wrote my final thesis, um, the introduction, at the Thomas Memorial Library. And I just want to share that introduction um, to you. The thesis was about, um, again, coincidentally, the revitalization of uh, 21 main towns in the state of Maine. And it was a series of case studies on what made a viable community in the state of Maine, particularly in small towns. So the introduction goes as this. Many towns and many small towns, like Cape Elizabeth, measure the quality of life based on rural places and outdoor recreational opportunities. But equally important to those towns are its built environments or urban areas. Public spaces such as libraries, theaters, schools, churches, and civic buildings define and create a sense of community. Preservation of these places is just as important to the quality of life as maintaining rural areas or the environment. Without these, a community can lose its identity and the residents, in turn, lose their sense of place. Municip municipalities throughout the state of Maine have been increasing efforts to revitalize their downtown area or town centers, like Cape Elizabeth, and improve upon the quality of life for residents and visitors. Cities and towns across the nation are coming to realize that a prosperous, sustainable community is only as healthy as its core. And I'll just end it there and hope that you do support in some measure um, the development of new library. Thank you. Anyone else? Final comments? Well, thank you all so much for coming. I think it really was incredibly helpful um, and productive, and a huge range of issues was raised that is a lot of food for thought, and the council will be talking about it at length. I would encourage everyone to go to the library website. It is a great, just brand new website, newly designed. It's very easy to use, and huge amounts of information. And please, if you have um, any ideas or follow-up or things that you didn't get to say or forgot, please email us um, anytime, call us, whatever. And again, thank you so, so much. Thank you.